I am excited to be here on SCZ Live today, and I'm with my friend Anne, and we are at the APF, or the Avian Propagation Facility. So I'm going to turn it over to Anne because she knows about this way more than I do. Hi, everybody. Uh, so we're standing in front of, like Kara said, our Avian Propagation Facility, or we call it the APF for short. Um, this building opened up about 10 years ago now. Um, and this is the site where we do most of our breeding for our small um, soft-billed birds, so passerine birds and uh, fruit doves and things like that. Uh, but we also breed some bigger species down here as well. Um, this is one of the things that guests don't ever get to see. Most of our staff doesn't ever even get to see the inside of this building. Um, the point of it is to give the birds a lot of peace and quiet and privacy, and so we just really limit the number of people that walk through this building. So you guys are going to get to see something that we haven't really ever showed you before. And not because we didn't want to show you, but we just didn't have this venue to do this in the, in the past. So um, before we head inside, I do want to show you kind of the layout of the building. Um, there's a central aisle behind me and flights down either side. And then um, on either side of the building, the, do, the birds do have access to um, outside flights as well when the weather is warm enough, which for most of that, our birds, that's over 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So you'll see um, they are outside already today because it's a gorgeous day here in Kansas. Um, and we're also having a little bit of construction going on on the far side over here where we're adding some large outdoor flights to be able to house um, our storks and cranes as well down here. So I think we'll head inside and I'll just show you guys what's going on in the building. So we have 20 flights here in the building. Um, each one houses one to two uh, breeding pairs, or if it's a flight that has birds that are waiting to go to other facilities, it might have a couple different species in it as well. Um, but we typically don't do more than two breeding pairs in a flight. Um, and we try to um, make sure that they're not species that are going to be competing for nest sites. So you'll see different nesting strategies in each flight. One of our friends asked, what is it close to? So, I mean, I guess it would be right behind the tropics building. Yeah, we're pretty much right behind the tropics building um, at the back part of the disease property, but um, quiet, but not totally secret. <laughs> and is it the tropics crew that does all of the care for these birds? Correct, yes. It's the tropics crew that um, works down here. We have one keeper who works in this building every day. Um, they come down and feed, and this building gets cleaned once a week. That's, again, part of um, staying out of here. We, we do try to make it as quiet and secluded for the birds as possible. Um, so you'll also see a lot of um, vegetation and cover and things like that so that they feel nice and secure so that they'll want to, to breathe. And, and I'm having a great time just looking around because I've only been in here one other yeah. time with Anne to get some supplies. So this is really exciting for me too. I see there's lots of potted plants for them to perch in and averaging. And um, I, what are these white things up here? That is our camera system. Um, we have a closed circuit camera system, um, one camera in each flight, that does allow us to monitor when birds are sitting on nests or getting off of nests. Um, and we have a monitor system right here next to Shanae that we can come down and watch. And it has a DVR so that way we, we can see what's going on overnight as well. About how many birds are housed in here? Uh, there are about 80 birds in here. Wow. Um, maybe not quite that many at the moment. Uh -huh. um, I, I don't have a current census, but Quite a few. Can you tell us um, some of the types of birds? Yeah, so we can walk down and kind of see if we'll be able to see any of the birds in the flight. They might all go outside. Um, but we have different um, species in here that we're trying to breed for our species survival plans. Um, right now you're looking at the blue-faced honey eater. Uh, this is our family group comprised of a breeding pair. Uh, that's actually our breeding male that you're looking at right now. Um, and then his mate and their three offspring 
Uh, they have a nest box over here on the right hand side of the flight that they are currently, um, we think, starting to nest again. We've seen the female going in and out of the box the past couple of days. Uh, you'll see that they have a lot of non-natural enrichment. These guys are a very curious uh, species from Australia. Uh -huh. um, if any Australian friends are watching out there, I'm sure right now they're maybe grumbling a little because these guys can be noisy and get into your things um, if they live in your neighborhood, but we love them. They're very curious and active. They are, they are very curious. <laughs> I noticed when we were waiting for you outside the APF, they were, they were like coming to the mesh to see what we were up to. Yes, they're always into everything. Um, they love new items, uh, so we do change things out for them uh, fairly often because um, they just love to investigate and see if there's any um, insects or anything like that inside new things for them to look at. They also really like flower nectar. They like flower nectar mm -hmm. and insects. What do you think their favorite food is? Uh, probably insects. Um, they also really like um, their nectar uh, juice that we provide for them. They're primarily going to be eating flower nectar and insects in the wild. And I'm, I'm checking out their and beaks and it looks like they're well adapted for those foods. Yeah, oh. he's actually showing, showing off. off. Yeah, that's our female. She's showing you how they eat that nectar. Um, so they use, you can see their beak is just a little bit curved. Um, they use that beak to reach down into the inside part of the flower to get the nectar. So they're also important pollinator species as well. We have a question. Sure. And you might have to think about it for a second. <laughs> what, what do you think the rarest bird we house is? Um, in this facility, it's probably the golden white eyes, which are from um, the Marianas Islands. Uh -huh. They are critically endangered. Um, but here at the zoo, it's probably going to be our um, Guam Kingfisher and Guam Rail. Oh, since they are. Um, well, they just the rail just got uplisted to uh, critically endangered, or I guess downlisted. I guess is more appropriate. Um, but the Guam Kingfisher is still technically extinct in the wild. So I'm going to give these guys a hibiscus flower, and you guys can see how they're going to um, <laughs> use those beaks to get down into. Do they, do they like people or would they prefer, I mean, are they just used to you guys as keepers? Um, or? These guys are used to us because they um, have all been hatched at the zoo, um, but they definitely don't like us when they're nesting. They're very vocal and they'll let us know that they don't want us around their territory. Um, so right now they're, they're just at the beginning of starting up a new nesting cycle, so they're pretty calm right now. But. Um, if they had chicks in the box, it'd be a different story. They do like that flower. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> and I love the blue marking mm -hmm. above their eyes. That's just amazing. And if you see any of the ones that the blue isn't as vibrant, those are the juveniles. Oh. Um, so that blue color develops as they get older. We have a question um, from sure. one of our friends. They'd like to know if we are housing any birds from China. Um, not from China specifically, but there are birds um, in that inhabit different parts of Southeast Asia uh -huh. at the zoo. Um, however, all of our birds were hatched here at the zoo. So right. their species can be found in that region of the world, but not any birds that came here from China. So, um, you guys want to walk down a little bit and we can sitting right there and um, his or her partner, I can't tell um, who it is, is sitting on a nest in the back of the flight. You probably can't see her, but there's a nest tucked back in behind that fake plant on the right side of the flight. Do you suppose you have more male or female birds in here? Actually, I know you know, <laughs> but is, are there more male or female birds or is it pretty equal? It's pretty equal because we have um, primarily breeding pairs uh -huh. in here. So one male and one female in each pair. Um, it's probably higher one way or the other when you count all the offspring that live down here, but it's pretty even. So this bird is absolutely stunning. Can you tell us what bird that is? Yeah, that is the golden-breasted starling. Of course, it just flew off. Oh, of um, <laughs> Those, um, and you might recognize some of the birds in this building um, from the tropics building. So we definitely have birds that are housed there and the, um, but we also have some species that aren't housed in the tropics building. Um, like the blue-faced honey eaters aren't in the tropics, but you can see them um, during the summer in the Australian exhibit. Uh-huh. 
This is much quieter yes. than the Australia South America <laughs> bird barn. And is right. that just because these are not parrots? Right. There's no parrots in here. Like I said, the honey eaters can get very vocal uh -huh. at times. Um, the birds do call. They're probably a little quiet right now just because we're down here and we're talking and, uh, and it, they're just watching us. It's more of a songbird sound. Right. Yeah. Doves cooing, songbirds calling. Um, these that you're looking at right now are oriole warblers. These are um, passerines or songbirds that um, will make beautiful songs. We also have the snowy-headed robin chats farther down that will actually mimic other bird calls. So he likes to sing a lot to impress his lady. I have two questions for you coming from our, our viewers. One is how long do the birds generally nest? Or is it species dependent? It is species dependent. Most of the birds down here um, will sit on their eggs for about two to two and a half weeks. Um, and that's just because of the types of birds they are. Um, some birds must sit on their eggs a lot longer, like flamingos will sit on their eggs for about 28 days. And then my second question that we have is, um, are we doing any conservation work in Hawaii? We are not doing any conservation work um, currently in Hawaii. Um, in the past, we did have some Hawaiian birds down here in the building, um, but those birds, um, that program ended, so we don't have those birds anymore. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there isn't conservation work going on in Hawaii. There's a, quite a bit of bird conservation work happening. Um, we just currently aren't involved in it. Uh, our focus is the Mariana Island region for this facility. Right, and it's it's good to have a focus like that so you can do that one thing and really excel at it. Yes, so we have three species um, from the Marianas Island chain in this building. The Mariana fruit dove, the golden white eye that I already mentioned, and the bridal white eye. You guys are looking at a beautiful fruit dove sitting there in the middle of the flight right now, and some red-billed leotrix, um, also known as pecan robin. Those are very cute. They are. They're fun, active little birds. Um, let's see, what else we have? There's more um, golden brassard starlings. There's a crested kua. You guys might recognize that species from the tropics building. Uh, we have a pair in the tropics building, but then a pair in here, um, trying to just duplicate efforts. This large flight behind you guys. Um, actually houses a bunch of offspring from last year that are just waiting to go to other zoos. Um, we have a question from our friend Jamie. Mm -hmm. She'd like to know if you need to have a specific degree to be a zookeeper. Yes, so we don't require a specific degree for sure, but we do want a degree that pertains to the biological sciences. So there's lots of different options out there. I, for example, have a degree in biology from Kansas State University. Go on, go on, cats! <laughs> uh, but a lot of our zookeepers uh, have attended the zoo science program at Friends University or other um, colleges where they've gotten um, you know, wildlife biology or whatever. So these are the, the starling offspring from three different species that we raised last year. Um, and they'll all eventually go to other zoos. So we, we have a question about superlatives. What's the biggest bird you house in here, and what's the smallest bird you house in here? The smallest bird is the bridled wide eye, and I wouldn't even try to show you guys that bird. They weigh seven grams, um, which is actually less than, or right around the weight of a nickel. Um, and then we're gonna just step outside to the back part of the building right now and show you the largest bird that we awesome. have back here. We have a pair of um, European white storks, that were um, non-releasable rehab birds from Poland. Uh, and then we have a pair of Demizel cranes who you might have heard just a second ago. They are sitting on an egg. They're going to be very loud and very protective, but we want to show you guys their nest. So these are the Demizel cranes. The male is on the right, his name is Desmond, and the female is on the left, her name is Tilly. And I don't know if you can see, but kind of halfway back, there's an egg sitting on the ground. Um, it doesn't look like much of a nest because cranes don't build much of a nest. Um, also, these guys are brand new at nesting. This is only their second attempt. 
Um, so we're hoping that they'll be successful soon, um, but we'll have to wait and see. And then the white storks are back here, um, and that's another species that we hope to breed. Um, but they haven't done much yet so far this year. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I, I would think that they, they weren't doing such a great job nesting looking at that, but that's just how they roll. Right, yeah, so cranes don't need to make much of a nest, um, especially um, this species. Some cranes live in, in wetlands and will nest on um, boggy plant material. Uh, these guys are in more arid regions, so that's kind of what the nest just look like, a little scrape. Well, Anne, we really appreciate you taking us through this behind the scenes area and showing us all this fun stuff. I am especially happy <laughs> that I got to come all the way through this time. So You're thank very you welcome. so much. And we'd like to remind everybody that even though we're closed, we're still caring. <laughs>